Hello, this is the Apex clothing tutorial with 3ds Max and we'll be working on a pair of pants. So let's go and open our start file. Then let's select any biped bone and go over to the motion panel and take the character out of figure mode. And then let's just scrub through the animation so we can have a look at the skinning deformation. And we can see that the knees are deforming nicely as well as the pelvis. And we've gone and removed the geometry of the crash test dummy underneath of the pants. Since we're never really going to see it, it really doesn't need to be there. And it's going to remove any potential penetration issues in a very complex area of motion. So we've removed the thighs and the calves and any ornamental items that are in there, as well as the lower part of the pelvis. So now let's go ahead and put our character back in the figure mode. And then let's select the pants and go into isolation mode so we can purely focus on this one aspect of the character. And once again, we have nice uniform geometry in the pants. And so let's apply our clothing modifier through the main menu bar or the physics toolbar. We can go ahead and toggle our physics visualization off as well. Now what we want to do is adjust our max distance. So let's turn our max distance visualizer on and we can see that we've got some default value there. So we want to go ahead and give us a clean slate. So we'll set it to zero and flood it. Then let's start with a distance of about five centimeters around the cuffs of the pants. Um, we're not looking for a lot of motion. We're, we're looking for some kind of constricted uh, folds that are gonna kind of bounce around like you would, like you would see on some loose fitting light pants. So we're going to take that value of five centimeters and paint all the way um, to about the knee area. And for those of you unfamiliar with the brush shortcut here, it is control shift and, uh, and mouse click. And then you can change your brush on the fly. Then let's go ahead and drop our value down to about two centimeters and we'll paint the thigh area. And then you can see where we've got these edges kind of converging up at the, uh, the belt line. What we want to do is leave the row just beneath that turned off. And the row beneath that will be our last simulated vertice. And we're going for a distance of about half centimeter to a centimeter around there. That way it gets a nice smooth blend back to the skinned geometry. Final. And now we have our three levels of max distance painted at 5, 2, and 0.5. So now what we can do is we can turn on our smooth brush and then we can hit flood a couple of times and we can smooth this out so we get a nice smooth blend from our 5 centimeter value all the way back to the vertices that are turned off. So since this is also blended into our vertices that were zero, um, we've, we've gotten our belt turned on here. Well, we want to keep that turned off. So let's go ahead and change our brush type back to replace, set the channel value at zero, and go and just let's turn off these top sections of vertices here. And here we have our final max distance painted pants. And as you can see when we play the simulation that they they, they fall right through the inside cuffs of the base, and we're going to use Latch to Nearest to fix that. Now let's change our channel to Latch to Nearest, and just like with the trench coat, we're going to paint the inside of the pants so that they latch to the exterior of the pants. And we've only modeled up so high on the interior because we don't anticipate the camera being at an angle to see anywhere above that. Also, you want to make sure interior and exterior edges align properly. 
Here we've got some that are crisscross, so we want to go in the edge mode of our editable poly and turn those triangles so that they match. Now we can turn our back face culling back on and turn edges only on. Now we can go back into our paint mode and paint the latch to nearest. Also it's handy to turn on the ignore back facing. This way you won't accidentally get the outside of the clothing mesh as well. Make sure that you have the edges of your pants cleaned up so that the, only the interior ones are painted. At this point, go ahead and paint the other side. So now if we go and play the simulation, we can see that the inside of the pants is staying latched to the exterior, so we're getting the proper behavior. Our primary type of collision in this instance is going to be backstop. Uh, backstop is comprised of the two components of backstop offset as well as backstop radius. The first component that we want to paint is backstop offset. And we're going to use a value of about a centimeter and what this is doing is telling the cloth that one centimeter in from its skin position is where the approximated collision is going to be. We're going to go ahead and paint up the left leg here, and we want to do the entire calf and thigh area at about one centimeter. And we are in wireframe mode as well. And you see that the blue mesh is the backstop region. And then as we get down to the cuff, what we're going to want to do is blend subtly back out to a backstop of zero. And zero would be the skin position of that particular vertex. So we're painting the one centimeter line at about the same place that the uh, geometry interior is built to. And for the thigh, we want to go ahead and do all the way up to the top, top loop of the thigh there. So let's go ahead and change our value to 0.75. And we're going to go ahead and start blending the backstop back into the actual skinned position. So we're going to start with a value of 0.75. And then we're going to move to a value of 0.5 centimeters. And now we're going to do the same thing down on the, the bottom of the pants legs. We're going to go ahead and paint some, some value of 0.5 to start blending this back to uh, eventually a value of 0. It's also a good idea to have ignore back facing on while you're doing this, um, especially in this area where we've got thick cloth down at the bottom because we don't want to accidentally paint that other side. Now let's go ahead and let's set our channel value to zero so that we can paint the backstop offset where we want it to match the skin position exactly. And then let's go ahead and hit F4 and go into shaded mode. And we can see that the other backstop has been colored in this uh, this area so we're just going to go ahead and and touch up these last few few rows and you can see here we only want to go up to the loop that's just below where the edges start converging and now take a moment to go ahead and replicate this on the other side of the model here we have our completed backstop offset on the model.
and we have it in wireframe mode and then in solid shaded mode so we can see what our values are. Next we'll adjust the backstop radius. Set the channel to backstop radius and turn the visualizer on. The default value of one centimeter isn't quite enough for our needs. What we want is a tighter approximation of that skinned mesh for the backstop to use as collision. In order to do that, we need a value somewhere around the neighborhood of 20 centimeters, as you can see here. Now that we've got this set, we can turn our visualizer off and we can move on to setting the attributes. Now let's set the attributes for the character. Let's go ahead and get out of isolation mode, then select any biped bone, go over to the motion panel, and toggle the character out of figure mode. Now go ahead and select the pants, and go back over to your modify panel, and let's adjust the attributes. For this particular character, we want some semi-heavy pants, but not too heavy, so we'll go with 0.7. We don't want a lot of friction, so we'll stay at 0.1. We'll also put 0.1 for bendiness since we're looking for a, a softer, more round fold rather than a sharp fold. Stretchiness should be at zero and dampening should be at 0.1 since we don't want anything too bouncy. We've got a lot of vertices here since this is a high resolution model, so we're going to stick our anti-stretch at 1.02. We're also going to set self-collision to one centimeter. And then let's check out the simulation and see how it looks. And as you can see, the foot penetrates through the pants. So in this case, there's a lot of motion down there, so backstop isn't quite sufficient for that. So what we're going to do is add a ragdoll to the character. So let's go ahead and put the character back in figure mode. And if you hit the physics icon on the physics toolbar, then you can bring up this uh, display tab settings. And from the toolbar, we're going to go ahead and create a kinematic ragdoll and select the ragdoll helper and move it up out of the way. And we really just want the pelvis just for any regions up there that backstop might not be getting as well and the two foot bones. The calf and thigh area seems to be doing quite well without any collision shapes. So we're going to go ahead and size up the, the pelvis here. We're going to go to the rigid body we're going to go to the rigid body modifier on the pelvis bone and select the mesh transform subcomponent and also utilizing the radius and height attributes we're going to fit the capsule to the pelvis as best we can while staying inside the pants model And that looks like it's going to work pretty well, so we can go down to the foot. And it's given us a convex shape, so what we want to do is go over to the rollout and change that to a capsule. Just like on the trench coat, we're going to adjust this to be slightly larger than the foot, and we're going to slope it down at the angle that the foot descends at. And yet at the same time, we, we do want to keep it inside the uh, pants model as well. So it looks like we got a good fit. So now let's select our ragdoll helper. And let's go down to the mirror rigid bodies. Click that and that brings up our dialog. So in the left hand field we'll put in underscore L for left and on the right side we'll do underscore R for right. And this should bring up both our foot bones. So we can select it and then say mirror selected. And we can go ahead and close that. 
and also you have the ability to save and load different variations of ragdoll so you can feel very free to experiment in an easy and fast manner. Now let's go ahead and take the character out of figure mode and let's play the simulation. So we're getting some real nice wide folds. Backstop's doing his job on the thigh and the calves, and at the feet area, the capsules are taking care of the foot area.